What's going on my century unit? It's the Sentiment here, so back again with another classic WWE pay-per-view review. Actually, this is a classic Great American Bash pay-per-view review. So far in the history of this channel, ever since I started doing these classic WWE pay-per-view reviews, I reviewed the 2004, 2005, and the 2006 edition of the Great American Bash in WWE. I did a vote poll on my community tab, what classic Great American Bash show you want me to review on the WWE side and also in the WCW side. Uh, your choices are the 2007 Great American Bash, the 2008 show and the Bash in 2009 is technically Great American Bash but they kind of shorted its name and a lot of people uh, want me to review the 2007 edition of the Great American Bash. I'm going to review it right now so this show was at the HP Pavilion right now I'm gonna butcher this um, name in a current timeline the SAP Center or the SAP Center at San Jose in San Jose California on the 22nd of July 2007 the attendance of the show was 13,034 Great American Bash 2007 received about 229,000 pay-per-view buys a bit up then the 2006 edition's buy rate um by the way the 2006 edition was a smackdown exclusive show the main event was Rey Mysterio versus King Bucker for the world heavyweight championship that show I think received about 227,000 pay-per-view buys anyway so it, like I said the 2006 show was a brand exclusive show this show is a trail branded uh pay-per-view this is a Raw Smackdown ECW show because they stopped doing brand exclusive shows um, in that year, in 2007. The final um, brand exclusive show of the first brand, brand split was No Way Out 2007 and, and, and that was the last time they uh, done a brand exclusive show until they brought it back in uh, 2016 part of the second brand split. So. Anyway, so the commentators for Great American Bash 2007. For Raw, we got JR and The King. For SmackDown, we got Michael Cole and JBL. And for ECW, we got Joey Styles and Taz. So this show is the first pay-per-view after Chris Benoit's death. You know, the whole Chris Benoit double murder suicide. Um, he was originally supposed to compete at Vengeance Night of Champions, the previous month's pay-per-view. Um in the finals of a championship you know you know because Bobby Lashley was stripped from the title after Fence uh, he have to beat Fence for the title you know he got drafted to Raw so they did a championship tournament to crown a new ECW champion um, the, the original uh, match in the finals of the tournament was um, CM Punk versus Chris Benoit and then suddenly Chris Benoit no show the pay-per-view uh, Johnny Nitro um, soon to be John Morrison took his place. Uh, Nitro won the belt from Punk on that pay per view, and then and then you had the whole double murder suicide. You know Benoit killed. Um, it's funny like the fans were chanting Chris Benoit. Oh uh, yeah, Benoit killed his wife Nancy. Uh, his seven year old son Daniel, then himself. You know the you know the history, and then it changed wrestling or mostly the day day forever the the presentation of the product you know I don't want to get into it you know yeah they did the um the tribute show to Chris Benoit you're not gonna find it on the network you have to find it on YouTube so yeah this is the first pay-per-view after the death of Chris Benoit so shocking wow 2007 was a crazy year for day day you know you know that's another story for another time so yeah um Let's do the quick results of the dark match. The dark match, you had Chuck Palumbo defeat Chris Masters. So the first match to kick off the 2007's edition of the Great American Bash. MVP defended the United States Championship against Matt Hardy. Um, yeah, uh, MVP, uh, this is his uh, first run as the United States Champion. Beats uh, Chris Benoit for the belt at Judgment Day two months prior. And this was the start of the rivalry between Matt Hardy and MVP in the mid card side on SmackDown of that year. So, um, um, Matt Hardy defeat MVP in a non-title match on SmackDown to get a shot at the belt on the pay-per-view. 
And then I think he uh, caused Matt Hardy in a match against Chris Masters on SmackDown, or Matt Hardy beat Matt Hardy um, on that match on SmackDown that led to, you know, you know, Masters locking the Master Lock onto uh, Matt Hardy, you know, to get, you know, is a get one up on Matt Hardy. I'm talking about MVP, by the way. Um, the match was good. It was a good, I think Matt Hardy and um, MVP, they got some good chemistry. Um, I don't think they fought in TNA. Maybe they did. did they? You know, um, they never go back to their rivalry. They never interact after that. You know, I don't think they interact in TNA. Um, they never interact when um, both of them in their, like, returns to the company years later. But um, it's just what it is. Um, um, I thought Matt Hardy got concussed. You know, there was a scary spot. You know, you, you know Matt was going for his typical splash I think it was a splash onto that middle turnbuckle, but I think MVP threw him off. I think he threw him off. He landed on his head. He, I thought he was going to be concussed, but he kind of recovered, you know. Um, Trying to keep it short and simple, folks. Um, MVP was going for the playmaker. Matt counted into the, not twist of fate, but the side effect, you know. Um, in the end, you know, MVP got the victory, hit Matt Hardy with, I think it was a big boot. I think it was the big boot then the um, playmaker for the win. So um, they had, I think, they had matches later on in the months, and they ended up becoming a tag team at one point. They ended up doing these um, contests, you know, a pizza eating contest, um, a basketball match, a boxing match, you know, you know, and then they ended up becoming. I think they ended up becoming a tag team. Did they win the tag team belts? I think they did won the tag team belts, you know. And then, you know, you had MVP turning on Matt Hardy, you know, injured, you know, injured his knee, injured him, put him on the, the shelf. Matt came back at WrestleMania 24, you know, trying to cast MVP um, at, in the Money in the Back ladder match. And then, you know, Matt Hardy went on to beat um, Matt, uh, MVP for the United States Championship the, uh, the following year at Backlash 2008. So... Yeah, um, the, it was kind of like a one-year rivalry between Matt Hardy and MVP, you know. And it's a shame for MVP. He never got, like, a big push after this, you know. Like, I think he's a good talent, you know. I think they wasted him. Like, his second run, that's fine because he's getting older. He's kind of like the manager of the Hurt business, you know. But I'm talking about his first run in the company. Um, he's kind of wasted, you know. Yeah, they give him a losing streak, you know. Um... And he was only 33, you know, when he came to the business, you know, you know, when he was in the company, he was about in his, like, mid-30s, uh, you know, he's about 33, 34, he's about, I, yeah, he was kind of like a year older than Matt Hardy, you know, but they, yeah, they really dropped the ball on Matt MVP, man. I could see him being a world champion or potential main event, you know, you know, but, so they, they, you know, I think that losing streak kind of killed him. You know, he was, mid, he was a mid-card champion. But uh, they never done anything after that, you know. I feel like, yeah, he was a bit wasteful for the rest of rest of his run in WWE. So, and it's just what it is. Um, so besides that, you know, it had a good, de it had a decent timing of this match in the opener. It's about twelve minutes fifty five seconds, so close to thirteen minutes. You know, did it outstay its welcome? You know, I wasn't really a bit bored, but it was a fine way to uh, kick off the pay per view. So let's move on. And also they end up fighting, they're competing in the game of chess, you know. You know, trying to make the rivalry entertaining, you know. So let's move on to the next match. So the next match, this is the final time that the Cruiserweight Championship was defended at a pay-per-view. I'll get to more of that later on. So we got a Cruiserweight Open for the Cruiserweight Championship. Chavo Guerrero, the champion, defending the belt against Jimmy Wan Yang, Shannon Moore, Funaki and JB Noble and self-proclaimed sixth opponent. I'll get to that shortly. Yep, that sixth opponent was Hornswoggle. I'll get to that a bit shortly as well. So it was short. It was about almost seven minutes, seven minutes long. You know, it wasn't a, a good match, but um, it was fine. It wasn't terrible. But it, I feel like it was a match you probably see on SmackDown. Um, you know, it was basically sizzle, but no steak. Everyone had their moves in. Showcase, a little, they showcased a bit, you know. Um, they, this memorable because of Hornswoggle, you know. I think this is the first pay-per-view appearance for Hornswoggle as Hornswoggle because before that he was known as the Little Bastard, you know. 
Anyway, so he showed up a bit. I think he kind of biting Chavo in the leg and then other competitors. I think they were one time looking at the um, the check uh, underneath the ring apron to where his Hornswoggle is. Um, this has turned a bit more of a comedy match. So in the end, Hornswoggle, who's really not booked in this match. And by the way, this is before the whole Vince McMahon illegible son storyline uh, began to happen. I think it came... I think it start after the show because you know the story because you know fence was technically got killed off in a in a limo explosion and then they, and then he was brought back after the whole you know chris benoit donor suicide thing so plans changed so anyway so hornswell came yeah you know showed up hit the um the tag pole the tag pole splash thanks the frog splash onto jamie noble for the win yeah, yeah, I think it was Bayern Chavo Guerrero, you know, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, and shocking it out, Hans Wagel is the final Cruiserweight Champion in the original Cruiserweight division, you know. Um, and then you got like Chavo screaming, you know, this was my belt, you know, no one looked good um, in this match, you know. <sighs> wow. If you see in your screens right now, the, the, um, the 2007's Great American Bash poster... It's Rey Mysterio. Um, I think no, yeah, I think I think the wrong person gone over, man. Like it'd be cool to see Ray compete in this match, you know. Maybe Ray was not really um medical clear to compete, you know. You know, he ended up returning at SummerSlam against Chavo Guerrero, um, his first match back since the injury, you know. But um, I rather have Chavo won this match, retained the belt on the show. Then you can have Ray because this show's in California, you know. Um, even though Ray's from Mexico, he's kind of like this adopted uh, Californian. He could really like um, he might compete in this match, you know, show up, compete in this match, you know, or probably not to win the belt, but like ha came came one short against Chavo, and you could set up this. Uh, it could really set up um, Ray and Chavo at SummerSlam the following month, but. Um, or Chavo wins, Ray show up, you know, um, hit Ray, you know, you can ha you can hit uh, Chavo with the, the West Coast, the West Coast pop and the six one nine to set up the match at uh, SummerSlam. But um, it's just what it is, man. Ch Hans Wagner as the Cruiserweight Champion, he was the final Cruiserweight Champion. Like I said, this is the final time that the Cruiserweight Championship, the original Cruiserweight Championship, was defended at a WWE pay per view until they brought it back, um, uh, you know, eleven years later in twenty sixteen. Of the um the second brand split you know two two oh five live and also you got the big purple belt you know the purple division you, whatever you call it you know um, I'm not gonna talk about it in this video probably a future video um wow you know Hornswoggle man um this was the downfall of that character you know you know he was oh I think in my opinion he was okay when he was the little bastard and ever since they changed. Uh, little bastard to Hornswoggle, he became a magnet of bad programming in WWE. You know, he ended up, you know, in this on this show, he become the last Cruiserweight Champion. He held the belt until they deactivate the the original Cruiserweight title belt in September of that year. Yeah, he became the last Cruiserweight Champion or the, the last original Cruiserweight Champion. He ended up becoming um, Vince's son. You know, in the whole Vince McMahon illegible son storyline. You know, instead of Mr. Kennedy, because at this moment in time, I think he's got suspended due to the... He was part of a steroid rig, you know. Yeah, he becoming Vince's son, the stuff with Carly, the stuff with the coach, you know. Crappy feuds with Chavo Guerrero. Um, it kind of it kind of lose Chavo uh, some credibility, you know. The stuff with Carlito, you know, the Roadrunner, uh, the Roadrunner story, uh, angle segment, you know. The hole in the wall, you know, meet me. Fucking stupid, you know, because at the time I think the, the even though it was still in the ruthless aggression era, but you could tell they're starting to like water down and tone down the product, you know. That's another story, enough time. I don't want to get into it, you know. Uh, he end up, he end up, he end up, uh, Hornswoggle will end up be part of DX, you know. He end up uh, becoming the Raw anonymous GM in uh, 2012. Yeah, he end up becoming. A worse magnet in day-to-day -day programming for the next the next few years, you know. And really funny for Chavo, you know. He this show is Chavo's show in the WWE version of the show, even though the the, the WWE version of Great American Bash is of 
is a watered down version of the show, the original show in WCW, you know, GCP and WCW, but um, it was his show because in, you know, in 2004 he had that epic good match against Ray for the Cruiserweight Championship. He didn't compete in 2005, you know, he was talking off TV, he was Kerwin White, and then he ended up like dropping that gimmick after Eddie dies. Then in, in, the, in the previous year, he cost Ray uh, the World Heavyweight Championship against Kim Bucker to sub their rivalry going into SummerSlam and the Autumn of 2006, you know. Yeah, it, I think this show is Chavo's show, and now he's just dropped the uh, Cruiserweight title to Hornswoggle, you know. It just makes him look bad, you know. Even though Chavo was kind of like, won the belt against Shane Helms or Gregory Helms at No Way Out, you know. He didn't do anything after this, you know. He took out Rey Mysterio, a former world champion. He should have got some more kind of like a, a kind of a big push of this, but it's just what it is, man. He should have really got, got out the card, in my opinion. He ended up becoming ECW champion, you know, the start of the next year. But um, I think, like, you know, even though Chavo was not, like, you know, Chavo's a good worker, but as a character, you know, it's a bit, mm, he's okay. But, um, um, so, yeah. It's just what it is. I'm trying to get my points out, man. Yeah, Hornswoggle is the last Cruiserweight champion. Holy fuck. Who come up with the whole idea, you know? I think, like, um, at this moment in time, Feds, you know, there's no WCW anymore, or a big company is challenging Fence. Um, maybe they should, it's the sign, like, Fence just gone business for himself, you know? Don't listen to fans, you know? It's kind of horribly true. So let's move on to the next match. So the next match, um, um, we got a Cinepol on a Kane match. Oh, Cinep Cinepol Kane on a pole match. <laughs> yeah, Cinepol Kane on a pole. We got Carlito taking on Sandman, James Fullington. Holy fuck, you know. This is Sandman's first, uh, pay-per-view match since, uh, since WrestleMania 23. Um, yeah, Sandman got drafted to Raw. Why did they draft Sandman to Raw? Even though he's an ECW legend, an ECW alumni, whatever you call it. Um, why? Because at the time, both guys were not doing anything, you know. Carlito was disappointed. And I heard, I, I checked him out on the Wikipedia page, but Carlito says he was um, very unhappy off this year. I'm talking about 2007, because um, he was not really booked. Um, in a match of WrestleMania 23, um, I'll get to more of that shortly. So he was on the worst of times. He was kind of flandering, you know. It's really sad, you know, because he ended up he went to Raw, IC champion. He ended up tagging tagging along with Chris Masters, you know, Chris Masters, and then suddenly, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's doing this story with Ric Flair and Tori Wilson. Now, yeah, he's just kind of flandering, not like the right direction for Carlito. Um, yeah, he's won, what, three championships in day you know, he was United States champion, the Intercontinental champion, he was the, the tag team champion with Primo, and he was gone. It's funny, he was happy right now, um, he's now part of the Judgment Day, even though he's so out of place with the Judgment Day, that's another story for another time, but, um, yeah, that, I feel that really dropped the ball on Carlito, I don't say Carlito's world champion, I don't think he's world champion material, but, um, I wish they, like... Um, used him a bit, bit better. Utilized him a bit better. Anyway, nothing much to talk about this match. You know, uh, Carlito versus Sandman, James Fullington in a Singapore Kane on the pole match. Nothing much to talk about. This is like watching paint drive. You know, at least with the Cruiserweight Open, you had some flashy pan moves for a little bit. It was not boring, but it's kind of meh. Blick, it's more like a piss break match. You know. Yeah, it was a piss break match. You know, it was. I think it's the um. Shortest match of the night. It was last about five minutes and thirty-one seconds. Um, it, I thought it was predictable that Sam would win because it could be his his match. You know, was, everything has to do with a cane. So, uh, Samman grabbed the cane from the pole. He's fought. He's going to hit Carlito with it. You know, they fought like time. They fought a couple weeks ago on Raw. You know, uh, one of them was a DQ. Um. Anyway, so. In the end, Carlito hit uh, Sandman with the um, backstabber for the win, and the, yeah, the the the, pole, the 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 candlestick, the Singapore cane wasn't utilized, so I wasn't doing this match. So, um, anyway, so I heard 
like done more, more research. He was about uh, Carlito almost got released in 2007 at the end of that year, but Vince kind of convinced him to stay. He ended up getting released in 2010, but um, yeah. Um, by the way, this was Sandman James Fullington's final match in WWE. You know, he ended up getting released in September of that year. Won't see Sandman ever again in WWE or any or in mainstream wrestling until he had a cup of coffee in TNA. Um, part of you know in the um, TNA Hardcore Justice show in, in 2010, the ECW uh, re reunion show, and then he ended up spending most of the time in the Indies. He's still in the Indies to this day. Um, yeah, the Sandman, you know, you could tell like the EC, the original ECW was kind of like watered down. It's not going to be the, like the original ECW. But, um, yeah, he was just kind of there, pulling over young Carlito. That was it, so. Even though Carlito, uh, not Carlito, Sandman, um, even though he's not a great worker, but he's more, he's much over because of his character, you know. You know, he's a, a, a Kendall sticking Pokemon. You know, he's, um, he, dr he drinks, he smokes, he swears, hitting his opponents with candlesticks, you know, that got him over. You know, yeah, it's hard to, you know, it's like, you know, I don't, I don't see him doing anything in doing that. He, he's just kind of there, you know, but um, he thought he's going to elevate, you know, he's kind of like, he's only there because he's part of the original ECW, but I don't want to get into that. You know, that's an, I might do a video on, the, uh, on ECW as the third brand for the foreseeable future, but um, yeah. Um, I don't know why he got drafted to Raw. I think that is a dumb move. I already stayed in ECW, you know. Yeah, I think leaving. I think getting released was the right choice, man, because you could tell like the the ECW originals are gone, or oh, soon to be gone. You know, uh, Sabu's gone, Steve Richards was gone, RVD was gone. You know, Dreamer stayed until 2010, but you could tell it's just not like the original ECW. It's a watered down version of the company, even though. They only did that because of they don't want to do extra TV taping off Raw and SmackDown, so it's just what it is. So let's move on to the next match now. So the next match we got the women's title match. Uh, Candice Michelle defending the belt against Marlena. This is the rematch from Vengeance Night of Champions. Candice Michelle beat uh, Marlena for the belt. Um, okay match. I'm really shocking. An okay match, you know. Um, I'm trying to keep it short and simple. Wasn't botchy. Um, it was okay. Uh, it only lasted about six minutes, but they kind of made it what it was. They made it what it, it didn't really have to say it's Vulcan. It didn't, they made it what it was. I'm trying to get, oh my god, tongue twisting moment. They made it what it was, you know, it's just what it is, man. But, um, yeah, nothing, I can't really, I can't remember the botch, but, you know, but it was an okay match. It was an okay tackle wrestle match, you know. I'm not saying this is a five star classic, you know, but, um, anyway, so Candy's, um, you know, that's, um, can oh, not Candice, uh, Candice Michelle, um, hit the candy wrapper onto Melina for the win, um, is that a bulldog it's called, um, and, yeah, um, there was one segment, um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna talk about it a bit later on, so, yeah, um, you can tell, like, um, they're kind of like, like, with, uh, Candice Michelle, Mickey James, Melina, they're kind of like, Fill in the void because at this moment in time, Trish Stratus and Leah are retired full time. So yeah, they kind of fill in the void. He has some good, good workers, but st still in this um, era of bras and panties, you know. You know, even though women's wrestling right now is much better than women's wrestling back in the mid two thousands. You know, it's all about eye candy, women, hot women. You know, good for good if good for if you're male and straight. But as a wrestler, wrestling fan, we want to see. At, Women's re women's wrestlers actual wrestle, well can wrestle. So anyway, let's get to this segment um, um afterwards. You know, so this is revolving around the Hardys. You know, you know, seeing yo know, Candy Michelle, uh, grabbing like a bottle of water, pouring the water around her hair towards her tits. You know, that's kind of funny. That's kind of cool. Even though it's kind of not kind of served the segment, but it was kind of a fine segment. Didn't really outstay its welcome. And move on to the next match. So we've got yeah, Umaga def or Umaga, or in the words of William uh, William Regal, Umanga. Even it's funny like Regal can't even pronounce Umaga correctly. It's Umag, not Umang. Anyway, so Umaga defended the Intercontinental Championship against Jeff Hardy. Um, Je uh, Umaga won the belt back from Santina Morella. 
um, on the second July's episode of Raw because because they had the show a couple months back in Italy. That was the debut of Santino Morella. He he ended up winning the belt and then all of a sudden you know Umaga won the belt back. You know Santino ended up coming a heel doing this relationship with Maria Maria. Um, anyway, so the match between um, Umaga and Jeff it was a good match, but I preferred the um. MVP uh, mat match from the opener, but it was good. But I find that a bit boring, a little bit. You know, it's basically speed versus strength. You know, um, you, had, you know, even though Omega's got strength, uh, speed, but he's got you know, he's focused on the you know strength side. You know, the whole bulk of the match, you kind of working, kind of locking that trap hold onto Jeff. You know, Jeff. You know, he's done the drop. I think it's a drop kick, uh, in inverted null kicks. You know, he hit the whisper of the wind. Um. Anyway, I thought Matt, I thought Jeff would want win this, uh, won the title on this show, the Intercontinental Championship on this show, and he almost did, you know, he, he hit this swanton bomb onto Umaga, Umaga kicked out, um, in the end, um, you know, um, I think it was a splash, you know, he did that splash in the corner, hit the Samoan spike, you know, and Umaga, um, retained the IC title on this show, so, um, yeah, this match only lasts about um, 11 minutes, you know. Um, it was fine, you know. Um, it was it was a good it was it was a good match, a decent fun match, you know. Um, I thought Jeff would win it, you know. Hit the Swanson bomb in one, but unfortunately, they maybe they want to keep the belt on the a bit longer. He ended up dropping the belt to Jeff on the September's episode of Raw, so I'd rather just have. Uh, you know, I get it. he's just, you know, Omega just won the belt from Santino a couple weeks back, you know. Um, anyway, so, it's really sad for Omega, man, you know. Like, the one person I could pair is Jacob Fatu, you know. Even though Jacob Fatu is related to, um, Umaga, he's his uncle, he's his nephew. You know, um, you know, Jacob Fatu is the nephew of Umaga, you know. It's good to solo, you know, wrapping his thumb, using the Simone Spike, you know, paying homage of his uncle, you know. It got me thinking, you know, if Umaga stayed alive, um, would he be part of the bloodline? We don't know, you know. Um, yeah, they really dropped the ball on Umaga, man. Really dropped the ball. Um, yeah. Like, he had potential, you know. I don't know. It's really sad, you know, he died a year after his mother died. It's just crazy, man. But, um, yeah, they really dropped the ball. He's like this big Samoan dude, he's speed, he's got strength, you know. Um, at this moment in time, they ditch his manager, Armando Alejandro Esprea. Even though he's he's the guy who speaks his native tongue, um, it's just like, um, um, you know, they, yeah, they really dropped the ball on him. Yeah, he, I think um, the only title he won was the Intercontinental Championship, you know. He, you know, he, he was in the WWE uh, Championship uh, match briefly with John Cena um, in two thousand in the start of two thousand seven, um, and now and then he's just like um, done nothing after the, afterwards. You know, he gets he got suspended. You know, he fi he got fired for violating the, the workman's policy, and he died in the end of two thousand and nine. It's just shocking. You know, you know, it's just another wife, massive wife in the in the last t almost twenty years. So. Anyway, let's move on to the next match. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of rambling, but I'm trying to get my points across, you know. So, the next match, this is for the ECW Championship. John Morrison defending the belt as... Um, John Morrison defending the belt against CM Punk. This is the rematch from Vengeance Night of Champions, you know. You know, when John Mar Morrison was originally become... He was originally Johnny Nitro. It was supposed to be, like I said, Punk versus Benoit. You know, Benoit no-show. And they got the whole double move suicide of Chris Benoit. Um, by the way, this is the first. Um, yeah, this is the first pay per view name for John Morrison as John Morrison. Yeah, yeah, this is the first pay per view appearance as John Morrison. Yeah, he was Johnny Nitro since he debuted. You know, he um, he won tough enough free. Yeah, won, he won tough enough free. He became Johnny Nitro. You know, he was um Eric Bischoff's assistant. Then he was part of Eminem with um. Joey Mercury and Melina, and and then at this moment in time, Eminem's no more because Mercury's got released. Melina's doing her own thing. Oh, she was the women's champion, and now um yeah, 
Johnny Nitro went to ECW, won the ECW title, and now he's John Morrison. It came out of a genetic music, you know, it, um, um, it's similar to his current music, um, we will end up having, I can't remember the lyrics or what it's called, I can't remember, but, um, anyway, the match between him and Punk was okay, uh, Punk said in his documentary, you know, he really, he was not, he was really unhappy of his, his feud with, uh, John Morrison for the ECW Championship, you know, um, yeah, this match was mediocre, it's not mediocre, it was just okay, it's still like a, um, the ECW title at this moment in time is dead. It was dead when Fence won the belt, you know. Um, anyway, um, it wasn't a bad match. It was okay. But, um, with, um, John Morrison and, uh, CM Punk, they never, like, blown, blown, like, really burned Bridget. Um, it was never decided to be a bomb burner. They really blow, blown this, not blown, I'm trying to get my words out. Uh, blown, um, blown blown people away, I'm trying to say, um, it's never going to be like, designed to be, oh my god, to be the talk of the town, um, but, um, it's just like, I feel like it's just a mid-card title, instead of a world title, you know, I feel like, they never treat, I mean the problem is, they never treat like the ECW title as a world title, you know, it's, 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 it's just feel like a, you feel like every time, a person winning an ECW title. I feel like it's just a mid carder holding the ECW title. It's just what it is. Um, anyway, so um, in the end, uh, I think Punk was going like a, a move off the top rope. Morrison hit him like a, a kick into the stomach area uh, while he's doing like the, the high fly spot. Um, Morrison won this match and um, continued this rivalry. This is the rivalry of ECW at the time. CM Punk versus John Morrison. They had the rematch at SummerSlam. Punk end up winning the ECW title on the September episode of ECW, and it's a very the problem with Punk. I think the problem with Punk at this moment in time, he was just kind of. I think he was the cookie cutter at this moment in time. The best thing for him was turning heel in two thousand nine, feuding with Jeff Hardy. But back then, he was so he was cookie cutter. Maybe it has to do with the mainstream. Um, casual WWE fans don't really know CM Punk that much. Only the diehard indie fans, you know, because of his run ROH, you know, you know, this is before the whole, this is four years before the whole pipe bomb promo and the rest is history. But, um, yeah, I think, yeah, he got, he did got some ki kind of cheers, you know, this is like Survivor Series, that was the show before December to December 2006, you know, but, but um, besides that, you know, Punk at the time was a cook, it was corny, it was just like, um, yeah, I think it, they're trying to mold CM Punk into the WWE's version of CM Punk, you know, the sports entertainment version of CM Punk, you know, yeah, you know, it's just like not doing Punk any favors, you know, I think his ECW uh, title run was a flop, you know, he ended up winning the Money, money in the Bank the following year, WrestleMania 24, becoming the world, champ, world, world champion, you know, like I said, his best run, his bet, the, the career turning point for him was turning heel. And brag about his strange uh, lifestyle towards Jeff Hardy, you know. That's another story of another time. Let's um, move on to the next match, you know. The, so the next match, we've got the Texas Bull Rope Match. Texas Bull Rope Match. Bull Rope Match. Sorry, I'm trying to get my words out. I'm speaking too fast. Texas Bull Rope Match. Randy Orton taking on the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, you know. Dusty came back in 2005 after his run in TNA. Um, he was the booker of TNA at this time. He, he left. Came to WWE, he was part of the creative team. He ended up getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2007, the night after WrestleMania 23, or the night before WrestleMania 23. Um, it was a good, a good introduction of his son Cody. Uh, Cody's making uh, appearances on WWE programming. You know, he had the story, he had the segment. You know, he had um, uh, between Cody, Dusty, and Randy Orton. You know. Dusty found Randy Orton being so disrespectful because at the time Orton was doing the whole legend uh, legend killer gimmick, you know. It was at the moment in time, you know, 2007, Orton was in the transmission period for him as a character. He, you know, he ended up becoming the heel Viper. That'll be in the second half of 2007, you know. But before that, he was the legend killer, you know. If you knew, like Mick Foley, he ended up RKOing Arco 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 um, Jake the Snake Roberts, you know. He ended up getting his new finisher over the punk kicks, you know, punk kicks like to Shawn Michaels and RBD. 
Um, anyway, so you kind of <laughs> you had this segment on Raw, you know. Um, you had uh, Orton slapping um, uh, Dusty Rhodes in the face, um, pissing off Cody. You know, you know, you can tell Orton and Cody had some history. They end up being part of Legacy, feuding in in 2010 when Legacy broke up. They feuded in 2011. And the uh, feud in 2013 when Orton was part of the authority. Um, anyway, um, this match was good. And, you know, doing this match on the show that made, when Dusty made his name. Or well, actually, I think, yeah, it, it was a good decision because Dusty was the inventor of this, sh um, this show, The Great American Bash, you know. Like, and also the announcers uh, bring up, you know, this show has lasted about 22 years, you know. It was, I think it's in the big five of one of the biggest shows of not just in GCP but in WCW's history alongside Starcade and Halloween Havoc, you know. Um, uh, yeah, um, so yeah, um, uh, you know, and even though you know it's an American theme, uh, pay per view, even though you know you had uh, Dusty Rhodes, it, his, the, he's the American dream, anyway. This is Dusty Rhodes' first, I think it is his first, uh, pay per view match or first match in the company for. I think since 1990, I think because he ended up left. He left the company in 1991. He ended up going. He ended up going back to WCW as a booker, but um, yeah, he, he was unhappy in day day F, you know, because he's like wearing the polka dots, you know, not being utilized. Even though the American Dream is not, it's not really Vince McMahon's creation. He's he's JCP's creation, you know. Um. Anyway, so yeah, there, there are segments like yet yeah, Orton was teasing to hit Dusty with the punk kick, you know. Anyway, the match between Ro Randy Orton and Dusty Rhodes um, in the Texas Ballroom match, it was okay. It wasn't bad, but I wish they executed a little bit better. And it's really sh shocking that there's no blood. No blood. There was no blood. It's just um, the cowbell. The cowbell was utilized um, not a lot, but some. You know, Orton hitting Dusty uh, on the leg with it, you know. Dusty has some good offense. I'm really shocking. That Dusty was 61 in this match. 61 back in 2007. Holy fuck, man. You know, against Orton, who was about 27. Wow. Um, he kind of carried Orton to an okay match. It was a brawl. It was an okay brawl, but I, like I said, I wish they utilized. No blood, you know. Um, in the end, Orton hit the um, the cowbell onto um, uh, Dusty Rhodes for the win. Afterwards, you know, Orton was teasing like he's going to... He's about to hit or, or, uh, Dusty with the punt. Out comes Cody, you know. Um, this is set up like, um, I think it was on a Raw, probably. The following night or the week after. Something like that, you know. It was on Raw, you know. I think it was um, Randy Orton versus Dus uh, Cody Rhodes, you know. I think Orton won. And afterwards, you know, Orton hit Dusty Rhodes in the um, the, in the head with the punt kick, you know. Um, yeah, um, and that, and that was it, you know, and then, you know, it's, you know, Cody ended up like, um, it's sure they never had a pay-per-view match between Cody and Orton, like, when Cody, Cody was starting out in the company, you know, he ended up like, teaming up with Hardcore Holly, um, he ended up like, it's funny, they ended up reunited when they were part of Legacy, then feuding, uh, feuding in 2011, feuding in 2013, it's funny right now, Cody's now, um, the American Nightmare, he's the current day day World Heavyweight Champion, or the Undisputed day day Champion, oh, or, or Universal Champion, I wish they dropped, I feel they dropped that name, because the, the Universal Champion is no more, even though we've got the World Heavyweight title belt, um, in our current timeline, in the current product, but, um, um, I wish they, it's a shame they never had, a, like, a pay-per-view match, you know, um, like, all I'm going over was the right thing, um, I mean, I don't, I, 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 you know, I don't, yeah, Dusty winning, I think they're the wrong choice, you know, I don't think Dusty don't need to win, but, um, like, I think he put over Orton pretty well, because Orton will be in that WWE title picture over the horizon going into the summer and the autumn of that year, but, um, yeah, like I said, I wish they executed a little bit more, I'm glad they didn't do, because uh, I'm not a big fan of strap matches, you know, touching the all four corners of the ring, I'm glad you have to win by pinfall submission, but I, I wish they utilized it a bit more, a bit better. Um, anyway, so let's move on to the next match. And then we've got the triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Holy fuck, Great Carly as the world champion defending the belt against Batista and Kane. Orig the original match was supposed to be 
Edge versus Kane and Batista versus the Great Kali. This is the start of this rivalry between Batista versus the Great Kali. Wow, I, I'll get to more of that uh, a little bit later on. Wow, um, yeah, the Kane dressed up like a character. It was a, I think it's a Mardi Gras um episode of SmackDown. Probably it was in New Orleans in Louisiana. It, it was in New Orleans. So yeah, Kane attacked Edge, chokeslam him, but uh, plans change. Edge uh, vacated the World Heavyweight Championship due to an injury, injured his arm pecs, um, because he had a, it was he kind of ended his rivalry with Batista, you know, he had a, you know, you know, because you know Edge uh, cashing the briefcase onto the Undertaker after he got attacked by Mark Henry, then Edge feud with Batista for a bit, for a little bit, and then and now he's. No longer the world heavyweight, world heavyweight champion because um, he's out due to injury. He came back um, at Survivor Series, you know, and it ended up winning back the world heavyweight championship. So, anyway, now you know, and then after that, you know, T Teddy Long announced they're doing a battle royal on SmackDown, a twenty-man battle royal to crown a new world heavyweight champion. The f I think the final three was Kane, Batista, and the Great Khali. Khali limit both Batista and Kane. And become the world heavyweight champion. That makes him the first Indian world champion in Dado history. This is 10 years before Jinder Mahal. Wow. Great Kali is the world champion, man. Who the fuck... Um, who the fuck who come up with the whole idea? I understand why they did that because the hands of Ty. Because for Batista, feud with Kali. Because for one, Undertaker is injured. Edge is injured, so you got no choice. The only because Edge was the top heel on SmackDown at the time, so Carly's technically the second heel on that brand, even though he, he just recently came out of his feud with John Cena for the WWE Championship. So it's just what it is. So I'm trying to keep it short and simple, man. The match was good; it was passable. I don't say this could be a four-star classic. It's not on the same level as Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit, that Triple Threat match at um, Backlash and WrestleMania 20. But it was a passable triple threat match, you know. I think Kane and Batista kind of carried Carly to a passable match, you know. They're good workers, but not great workers, you know. Um, they hit Carly with a choke slam and Batista bomb or sidebuster combo onto the announce table, um, and then it was just um, Kane and Batista fight one on one. You know, Carly just really put me asleep. I was looking on my phone. It was kind of getting boring a little bit. It was a bit mediocre a bit, but I'm not saying it was terrible, but it was good. It was a bit passable, but um, anyway, so I'm trying to keep it short and simple. In the end, Batista hit the Batista bond to Kane. Carly pulled Batista out of the ring, and Carly hit the Carly bomb onto Kane. By the way, this is their first match since their horrible match at WrestleMania 23. Forgot to, I forgot to mention that, so... Uh, Batista winning was the right, uh, not Batista, Carly retaining the belt on the show was the right call, or retaining, yeah, retaining it was the right call because, um, he just won the belt, you know, even though, Car I think Carly's reign is the worst, it's the fucking worst, I think he's the worst world heavyweight champion of the big gold belt in Daily E, the original big gold belt in Daily E, you know, like, they only pushed him and put the world title onto him because of, of his size, the presentation and size because Carly was a, a former bodybuilder before he became a pro wrestler. But that was a bad decision because, um, wow. Like, um, you know, they got fans chatting, you can't wrestle, but he's, he can't wrestle. He does the chops, the, the Carly bomb, he end up doing the vice grip. Oh my god, that is the worst hold. You know, when I see that uh, match, Rey Mysterio Carly, when Ray's bleeding, I, oh my god, I puked, man. It's fucking. Terrible, man. I'm sorry about my language, man. This is, yeah, the continuation of the Batista Kane rivalry. Uh, Batista Kane, Batista Carly match uh, rivalry. Sorry, I'm getting my words out. Uh, I forgot to bring my drink. I'm f I'm dehydrated, man. But anyways, this is still a continuation of the K uh, Carly Batista rivalry. The uh, the um one on one match at SummerSlam, leading up to the Infidus basketball promo. You know, Carly fire script a basketball. Batista, you know, says you're not gonna get put me in the ring with the basketball. Basketball don't hold grudges. You know, I think um, I think Batista went on to win the belt um, at Unforgiven, and they had the blow off at No Way Out. Um, not No Way Out. No at No Mercy. My apologies. At um, in a Punjabi prison match 
Wow. Well, I've. It's got to be the worst rivalry of 2007. Batista had the best rivalry and the worst rivalry of 2007. The best rivalry against uh, The Undertaker and the worst rivalry against The Great Carly. His feud with Edge was fine. But even though, like, you know, Batista is kind of like, um, kind of like carry the blue brand, you know. You know, I understand why they're keeping the belt away from Batista, you know. Ever since he dropped the belt to The Undertaker at WrestleMania, you know. He ended up winning the belt back, you know. But, um, like, yeah. Carly was filling in for because Edge was hurt, you know. Undertaker was hurt, you know. Um, the the spat down roster a bit was a bit depleted. Anyway, before we get to the main event, folks, um, briefly we got Gr uh, King Booker, oh King Booker, <laughs> the fucking accent man. So, yeah, there was a video package of Triple H coming coming back at SummerSlam. Uh, Kim Booker like was pissed off, you know, saying like Triple H is not he's not the king of anything, you know, I'm the true king. Then he kinda of confront Jerry the King Lawler, asking to give him his crown. Um Lawler says, You want it, come and get it. And King Booker and Queen Charmel left, and that was it. It's not leading up to Booker T versus Jerry the King Lawler, it's a lean up to a beatdown between Lawler and and, you know, King Booker beat down Jerry Lawler on Raw. It's just leading up to Triple H's return against King Booker at SummerSlam. And this was King Booker's second and last pay-per-view appearance because he, the following month at SummerSlam, he ended up uh, drop, jumping to Triple H. And he won't see King Booker ever again, or Booker T in daily, uh, daily ever again until making his return at the 2011 Royal Rumble match. So, why they do this segment with Booker T not scheduled on this match, you know, or on the he's not booked on this show, you know, this segment belong it, it belong on Raw, man. I say it once, say it twice, say it more, many more times. Why are you doing segments on pay per views? It don't serve a purpose, you know. If you you know, just save it on free TV, man. Just don't do it on a pay per view. Pay per view matches or pay per view wrestling pay per views are designed to showcase the actual wrestling. Not the segments, you know. Do it on a weekly wrestling TV show. It's just what it is, you know. I think like, it's just like, it's just defi- I think when uh, announcing Triple H will come back to SummerSlam, kind of derails Triple H's return, you know. I think they were kind of, at the time, probably knew that Triple H will return compared to when he came back in 2002 after the first quad tear, you know. Because Triple H said in an interview, talking about his first quad tear, that he said, like, his doctors told him that he would never wrestle ever, ever again, you know. You know, that was kind of like a, you know, you know, like, I'm worried that, or spe speculation that he might not wrestle again, who might come back, he might come back longer than one year. So, it's what it is, man. You know, let's move on to the main event. So, the main event, we've got John Cena defending the WWE Championship against Bobby Lashley. Um... So, um, I think it was, you know, Bobby Lashley won a number one contenders match to face John Cena at the Great American Bash, you know, we had this, um, I think he had this debate speech on Raw, you know, Cena's, like, um, doing his jokes, you know, so, Cena's funny, but some of it's kind of hit or miss, you know, I like the segment with, you know, with the Nexus stuff, that's kind of funny, you know, Cena's funny, sometimes some of these things are kind of hit, hit, hit or miss, you know, um, anyway, so, they really treat this, you know, this program between John Cena and, and Bobby Lashley, you know, um, they treat it like, this, this program is belong, like, it treat it like this is supposed to be at, at WrestleMania or SummerSlam. I wish they'd done this at SummerSlam instead of John Cena and Randy Orton, even though it's a good match, you know, but I wish that, um, it's leading up to, like, soon to be Orton putting John Cena's head in, uh, John Cena's dad in the, on the head in the head with the punt kick, including John Cena himself, but um, I wish they just save it at SummerSlam, you know. It got that big fight feel, you know. The show video package of Bobby Lashley's accomplishments, his debut, winning the United States Championship, winning the ECW title at the Elimination Chamber at December to Dismember, John Cena's video package, you know. Um, yeah, superstars talking about the match between John Cena and Bobby Lashley, you know. Um, this match was good. It wasn't designed to be a five-star classic, you know, but it was a good fucking... It was a really good... I think I'd call it match of the night, you know, Bib. They're both similar in height and size, you know. Um, and both, they're both similar similar in age, you know. I think um, Lashley's a year older than Cena. Cena is about, at the time, 20. I think Cena was 30. 
Lashley's soon to be 31, so wow. But, um, I also bring, I think they also, in the Bobby Lashley package, are showing his uh, accomplishments in, in the, because they, because Lashley competed in the army, he was a former amateur wrestling champion in the army, uh, in, also in high school, you know, like, you know, set up with, with Bobby Lashley, he's, he's basically having, it's like Goldberg and Brock Lesnar having a baby, you know. Um, anyway, so, the match were kind of like, it was a mixed bag, you know, um, they don't really need um, to put on a great match, you know, they got the crowd in the palm of their hands, you know. Um, the match was really good, back and forth between Cena and Lashley, it's the one, it's really shocking, that's the one and only time that uh, Cena and Lashley fought one on one. It's a shame. Because at the time when Lashley came back in 2018, Cena was part time, you know, it's a shame. You know, Lashley never got his win back, you know. Shame. You know, spoiler alert, he ended up Cena ended up retaining the um the WWE title on this show against Bobby Lashley, you know. It's a good showcase of Bobby Lashley, you know. Um this is gotta be Bobby Lashley's best match of his first run in the company. Like, um I think Cena locked in the STF, um he did some amateur moves, you know, he hit the power slam, yeah, he hit the power slam on Lashley, Cena kicked out, he kind of applied the STF onto, Cena applied the STF onto Lashley, um, you know, Cena, um, not Cena, Lashley reached the ropes, I thought you like, I thought, I seen it like a match, um, on YouTube a couple of years back, you know, um, I thought like, um, Lashley passed out, you know, no, Cena, and no, he reached the ropes, you know, uh, Cena hit the FU onto Lashley, um, Lashley hit the spear onto Cena, but the, those are n near fours. Yeah, Lashley didn't. Yeah, Lashley didn't hit the the dominates onto Cena. He hit the spear. Cena kicked out. So in the end, Cena hit the super FU um, onto Lashley. I think it was off the top rope uh, to pin him and beat Lashley to retain the championship. Afterwards, Cena and Lashley shot hands, and that was it. So. Um, I think people want to see uh, Lashley winning it, you know, because Cena is still trying to make a name for himself, being like a main eventer, you know, big match, big match John. Lashley is kind of like the rising star, you know. Um, I wish that, I think if Lashley, win, I think like Cena retaining the belt on this show was good, you know. Let's be honest, I think 2007, I did like, like I said, I did a video of... Dirty, uh, Dirty, uh, wrestler of the year, 2000, I think it was 2000, was it 2000 to 2022, on the 2007 side, I say John Cena, you know, it's between Cena and Batista, but I go with Cena because, um, because Batista had that crap feud with the great Carly, even though Cena's feud with Carly was okay, but he went on to, had great matches in 2007, against Umaga, against, uh, Shawn Michaels, Bobby Lashley, Randy Orton, competing in the triple, uh, I think it was a fatal four-way match of Backlash, I think it was a six pack challenge at Vengeance Night of Champions, you know. Um, it really established Cena as Big Match John, you know. You know, um, you know, Cena, like, um, I don't think he had. I think people get sick of Cena, even though he was kind of like a co star instead of the man. He'll become the man, no pun to Becky Lynch, but when, like, he become the man, I think it was around 2009, 2010, but um, anyway, but. Um, I think I think Lashley winning will be the right. I think it should be the should be. I think it'd be a, be cool. You know, it'd be a coordination of Bobby Lashley winning. I wish they'd done it at SummerSlam. It'd be cool to have Lashley winning the belt. You know, because he's the rising star. You know, you know he's you know he's kind of like, when he first came to the company he was a bit vanilla, a bit bland. Two thousand six was a turning point. You know, he's starting to improve. Um, he was never Lashley was not. I think Lashley was. In his first run was not really a good talker. It's really funny right now in his second run he's improved on the mic, you know, he's a better talker compared to in his first run in the company. But um sadly this was Bobby Lashley's final match of his first run in the company. I'm guessing they were supposed to do a rematch at SummerSlam. But instead Lashley got hurt by Mr. Kennedy on Raw, injured his shoulder, and he got released in January of two thousand eight. And you never see him ever again until 2018 because as it, uh, because he ended up like bouncing around in MMA with Bellator Triple Triple A. Um, the that was a wrestling company in Mexico. He, he had a run in TNA, and his his first run was a bit disappointed. His second run was a bit memorable because he ended up winning all the championship in TNA in one um in 2017 in that 2017 period. 
Um, and then he came back in the company in 2018. His first um, half of his second run was a bit disappointed, you know, feuding with Sami Zayn, beat Roman for the number one contendership against Brock. He lost to Roman the night after Extreme Rules. Um, he ended up like he ended up like uh, doing this stuff with Leo Rush, you know. He ended up yeah, he was Intercontinental Champion, but he was you know the stuff with the with Apollo Cruz with the posing that was crap. Then the whole love triangle storyline with Lana. I'm talking about C.J. Perry's uh, Lana, not Lana Austin, and and Rusev. Um, the, I think that stuff with the um the Hurt Business was the career revival of Bobby Lashley. You know, I like the Hurt Business. You know, with MVP Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander. He was he had a dominant run as the United States Champion. He won't win the WWE Championship. Um, will be in 2021, 14 years later against the Miz on Raw. He went on to have a good, he had a solid run with the belt, you know, he ended up having that match against Bobby Lashley in, uh, I think it was day one or at the Royal Rumble in 2022. I'm not a big fan of it, that was just, I thought it was disappointed, you know, that was just setting up uh, Brock and Roman at WrestleMania 38 um, for the unification of both the WWE and the Universal Championship uh, all together. But um, he ended up like uh, teaming up with the Street Profit, you know, um... You know, it's funny right now, he end up, I heard he's got released again. I think I was okay for his second run in this company. I think I was fine he's got released right now because he's done everything he could in WWE. You know, he's done. You know, he's 45, you know, he's still in good shape. But um, compared to his first run, you know, if he, I wish they never, I wish they never, like, released him. I wish he just, like, you know, came back. Did not release them. Wait until he came back from shoulder surgery and resumed his push. I think he never got. If he just like didn't release them, or maybe maybe he um. It's better who say who said it. You know, one moment like he they released him for no reason. Uh, the other ha on the other side, it's like maybe he's really you know he wanted to leave on his own terms. It's, I don't know, but um, if he got didn't got released in two thousand eight, I think he could come back from injury, resume his push, win the WWE Championship. Um. Uh, at, at some point, in t whether it's in 2008, 2009, and job done. You know, I think, like, with Triple H coming back from the quad tear, Shawn Michaels uh, coming back from his um, absence, you know, you got the return of Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio and The Undertaker, you know. I think his, I think his place on the card was a bit, um, I think it'll be, no, I think it's running, I think he's, he's going to be let, lost in the shuffle, you know. If he stayed, you know, but um, it's just what it is, man. But um, it's but I think it was just a waste of opportunity at the time because Lashley was thirty one. You know, if he want, if they put the belt on him, that'd be really good. It'd be a historic historic moment, you know, becoming the first black champion. That was um, it'd be like a, a uh, you know, eight years before Kofi Kingston won the belt. You know, it'd be a biggest moment. You know, but besides that, you know, it was a good match. You know, I wish the fans go home happier because at the time they hate Cena you know afterwards you know Orton went out uh, not Orton Cena went on to have a few with Randy Orton at SummerSlam and over again this is including like Orton kick, kicking John Cena's dad in the head and then Cena have to fake it the title due to injury and yeah yeah it's just what it is man you know I think Cena is the I think it's his first second third runs as WWE champ my overall rating of Great American Bash 2007, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The reason why I give this show a 6 out of 10, before I get more into this, um, I just rewatched the World Heavyweight Triple Threat match on this show. Carly versus Batista and Kane. I'm going to put this match in the okay instead of the good. It's just an okay Triple Threat match. Not on the same level as those Triple Threat matches from 2004. Revolve around Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Chris Benoit. Um, yeah, this show, not terrible, but not great. It was an okay show. Um, the one match I put in the bad has to be the Carlito versus Sandman match. You know, the Singapore Kane on the pole match. That was just why they put this on a pay per view. Um, they should have, it should have put, this is a match you probably see on Raw, um, Hornswoggle winning the Cruiserweight tile, that was just, like, not necessary, um, wrong person gone over in that match, um, 
the King Booker segment, you know, had no purpose, you know. I think it just came across a segment you see on Raw. Um, but, um, th yeah, this is a free match show. Um, the free matches in the good for me has to be MVP versus Matt Hardy for the United States Championship. Uh, Umaga versus Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental Championship. And also Cena versus Lashley for the WWE Championship. Um... Yeah, and um, that was Lashley's final, um, yeah, it was, like, Lashley, Lashley's, what, best match in his first run in the company, and his last match on pay-per-view in his first run in the company, but, um, the undercard, uh, the undercard on the show was okay, they're not bad matches, they feel like, they're kind of okay for what it is, the, um, I'm gonna, I've got the, um, I've got the card down. Uh, the cruiserweight, uh, cla the cruiserweight open for the cruiserweight title was okay, despite of Hornswoggle winning the belt. Um, uh, Candice Michelle versus Melina for the women's title was also fine, was okay. Um, Morrison versus Punk for the ECW Championship was okay. The Texas bull rope match between Randy Orton versus Dusty Dusty, Dusty Rhodes, getting my words out. Uh, Orton versus um. Dusty Rose in the Texas ballroom match was okay, and f like this is Dusty Rose's final match as a wrestler, and it's really his first match um, as an active wrestler in years. That was okay, but um, yeah, this was, and also the the Triple Threat World Heavyweight Title match was also okay as well. Yeah, yeah, um, it. I think the 2006 show was a bit better than 2007 show. Um, because the 2006 edition of Great American Dash, despite of the card change due to the Elevate Liver Enzymes diagnosis, but that was a, a better show than the 2007 edition. But um, yeah, I'd rather skip the show and or just watch. I'd rather watch the three matches, like all, yeah, you know, Matt Hardy versus MVP for the United States title, Umaga versus Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental Championship. And Cena versus Lashley, yeah. Um, maybe at the time, maybe the Chris Benoit's death is still fresh in people's minds. Um, I haven't seen the rest of WWE pay-per-views in 2007. I think after this, you know, I think the show's quality kind of, uh, like, their quality uh, will dip down, will kind of kind of dip, like, quality, you know, due to you know, the Benoit's death, you know. You know, we've got SummerSlam 2007 over the Rising, you know, and then... Yeah, um, I don't want to get into that, you know, but, um, yeah, the 2007 edition of the Great American Bash, you know, like I said, not terrible, not great, it's just a okay show to watch. On second thought, I'm going to re-update the score. Instead of giving it a 6 out of 10, I'm going to give Great American Bash 2007 a 5 out of 10. Yeah, this is an average show to watch. So, what's your thoughts on Great American Bash 07? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash the like button, click the like, click the bell, subscribe to the Central Man Milk on YouTube, be part of the Central Unit for more wrestling videos and more. Next time, SummerSlam season is nearly upon us. SummerSlam 24 is also upon us. So, for the month of August, once again, I'm going to review some classic SummerSlam shows. Once again, I'm going to do a folk poll for what classic SummerSlam show you want me to review. Until then, this is Essential Man officially signing out. Check you later, folks.